This is Donate Your Bone Marrow. Get it from otfi.com slash marrow. Guess who just got back from be the match.org. Guess who's in the registry? Definitely gonna give bone marrow for free. It's me, I'm great, you see. Because I give bone marrow on a live show. We it's too good. It's too good. It, what was the fucking point? <laughs> oh it's still not Tuesday night. That's our new game. Where we go to flight and we fly to the sky. I don't know, hey man. Ah, uh, hello you beautiful people. It's Monday night, the night before Tuesday night. It's been all of 72 hours since your last night attack. We figured that you were under attack. Your doctor called and said we're, that, that you were dangerously under attack in the night. So I'm Brian Brushwood in Austin, Texas, joined by my BFF in OAK. It's J-R-Y. What is up, Justin Robert Young? Uh, Brian, uh, very serious medical uh, uh, episodes all across the country with people being under attacked. Uh, we were called uh, by uh, uh, the highest levels of, uh, of government to say, listen, you got to get back out there. I mean, uh, the people need more attack. That's right. Mike Pence called and said, listen, I've already fired the Surgeon General uh, and we haven't figured out who is going to replace them. Uh, I also don't know who they are because I'm not very well informed on this. But in the meantime, I need you to attack the knight. The knights are under attack. <laughs> and you're the cause. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Um, have you been in the intervening 70 hours since the last time we did one of these? Man, a lot's changed since lunch, Brian. You know, I'm just um, I'm doing a lot of crazy crap. Like I went away and then I came back and uh, so no nothing. I've sat around in the apartment and I watched uh, television and movies pretty yeah, much. Dude, tomorrow is my debut teaching a class at the Wizard Academy. Oh um, yeah, right. You would think I'd be preparing all day, but instead, what I'm doing is uh, uh, five Podcasting. five podcasts, <laughs> literally yeah. five podcasts all day today, so that uh, so that I can have the clear schedule for the next two days, and then At I can hop on a plane and go to Dragon Con. Yeah, no. The next time you guys will hear us on the feed, we'll be uh, live from Atlanta. So this will be the last time that we get every uh, to tell everybody. Please come out if you are in Atlanta. Even if you don't have a Dragon Con ticket, you can get uh, limited. Uh, there are tickets available just for Saturday. So you can come, enjoy the entire day, uh, see us at night. Uh, we are at 10 p.m. in the Marriott. Oh, that's right. This is the first time that we ventured out of the Hilton and into the Marriott. Uh, absolutely. So uh, come on out and see us. A uh, uh, ton of surprise guests. And by surprise guests, I mean people we have yet to book. Yeah, we've got. Uh, uh, we're gonna figure it out. We, It'll we, be a fun we, we time. We could spoil one of them, right? What? We could spoil one of the guests. I mean, sure, I'm sure yeah. you could figure right. it out. I'll the give one you a hint. Texted last three days ago. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait to spoil the next thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> we've already got confirmation no, that we're yet. gonna have Cargill out. That'll be amazing. That'll be great because uh, you guys know how Cargill episodes are in, in general. general. <laughs> like, like, and and. I think it would be safe to say that Cargill's the kind of guy who wants to do it for the story. If things start going, getting crazy, uh, it's on in front of that crowd, man. It's in the be chat, wild. NSFW Ben is saying, and by surprised guests, you mean a fuckload of Tito's every year. This is my oh, favorite my. thing is to look at ben, ben Franklin getting hammered with what ostensibly, I'm going to use air quotes here, uh, is a screwdriver, which you would believe in, you know, half, uh, uh, you know, orange juice with a bit of Tito's or whatever. Motherfucker takes a Tito's bottle, like takes an eyedropper of, of uh, orange juice, bloop, and then he's done. And then, uh, yeah. It, yeah. That's it. No, and he'll, he'll, he'll sneak up on you. And just be like, uh, uh, hey, man, you want some uh, orange juice? And sometimes you really need some orange juice. <laughs> and then you bring it close to your face, and it, it it smells like an entire craft cocktail distillery. And you're like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, like, this is not even liquid. Hey, so am, am I – I was trying to explain to somebody the majesty of Dragon Con. And one of the things yeah. that that is, of course, a big selling point is the cosplay aspect, the fact that so many people show up in costume. And yeah. one of the stories that popped out was those snipers that dressed up as the rug in the Marriott. Is, am, yeah. am I remembering this right? But but when I went to call up the image just to show it off, what came up was an article saying like those guys were being sued 
for cosplaying as the carpet. Is that, so is that a they thing? They were sued for cosplaying. They got sued because they put it up on Spoonflower or whatever, like the, the place where you can like upload patterns so people can download them or you could sell them. It was set for free, but it was just the, the carpet company basically protecting their IP because they had listed it on this site. <laughs> their, ear, their IP for horrifically hideous designs. Oh Which God. I'm so, so pissed, funny. though, because they took it out, and now it's boring, and I miss it because it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so uh, All right. also the Marriott. Uh, there was that uh, in the preview for uh, Sp uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. They show they show uh, uh, the vulture swooping in in what's clearly the Marriott, but yep. uh, uh, but 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 I didn't see that in the movie. Uh, neither did I. <laughs> okay, right. I, I think it was a scene that didn't show up. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe yeah, it was a yeah. deleted scene. Hey, how about this? Uh, tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. Obviously, no, you're right. We should do the entire episode about the Marriott, especially. <laughs> so what does their new carpet look like, Justin? <laughs> Brian, I'm glad you asked. Here is our 14-point presentation. <laughs> when you say eyeline, you say brown. Can we introduce you to these rich chocolatey delights that could dapple the floor at your Marriott? <laughs> Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, explain to everybody what we're up to today. Uh, well, as you guys can plainly tell, uh, <laughs> there's really not enough time when we're also doing other stuff for us to do two shows in four days. So we're going to do a little something uh, uh, special on this episode. And instead of there being games or bits, we are going to we had an AMA uh, on our own uh, our own Reddit. It's right? a new shenanigan we like to call telling the truth for once. The game. Yes. And in this game, you ask us questions, and we respond honestly and uh, with authenticity. Oh, we have a photo of the new Marriott car Wait, carpet. did somebody intentionally mis mismatch that one square? What's uh, going on there? I don't know. I think that's part of the design, Brian, to show you that life is futile. <laughs> Man. I'm gonna I'm gonna stand on that square and I'm not gonna move you're not for gonna, anyone. You're for not gonna anyone. See it. There's gonna be I'm gonna 10, stand on that square. I'm gonna stand yeah. on that you know square. What? That's you know my what I know? square. You know what I know? Hmm. Is that these are squares. Like the whole thing is just <laughs> wait. <laughs> Nailed it. Got it. No, wait. Go ahead. Wait, there's more. Squares. They're in they're they're like the the carpet square. So like whenever some somebody who's been Oh, I don't know, drinking Tito's with a, an eyedropper of vodka and they eventually throw up on the carpet. They can just take it out and, and swap it and out. And then yeah. swap it out. But somebody went over there and swapped the carpet tiles and that's what you got. Oh, so. because it's it's this is like it's not you, you a think pattern. one person yeah. like shat himself on that spot. That's what that's <laughs> where like, that's where like Alexander Hamilton you need, you need F fourteen. And they're like, shit. That's the one that fell out of the truck on the way to the Marriott. <laughs> <laughs> well, just just take uh, B-72. I'm sure nobody will notice. Sturdily, sturdily. <laughs> Look at this carpet. What's nice is you can tell it's clearly only supposed to be like a foot and a half to the left. Yeah. Like the pattern oh, yeah. is, is pretty. Oh, Not that far off. It. They almost got it. Okay, look, I'm gonna periscope that spot. How about that? I'm gonna oh, take Christ. all of you with me. All That'll right, be every, our uh, stand. Bryce, tweet that out right now at <laughs> Night Attack. We're, uh, we, you're, we're, we're gonna have this is the challenge. Yeah. Brian is going to stand on that square, or he will pay five thousand dollars <laughs> to oh, to, oh. to the charity of my choosing. No, to the Marriott. <laughs> you just <laughs> have to <laughs> add it on. To I just show up with 20s and I'm like, "Sorry, it didn't stand on that I square." Do They're like, "What are you for talking you. about?" You got me with that square. You got me with that square. What a weird prank that would be to just walk up to the front desk and, <laughs> and just start laying out 20s. Give a and then when they ask franchise. what this is about, you know, like like you 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 distractedly and annoyed look up and go like you don't know. And then you just keep on dealing. No. Uh, all right, Brian. So we got we got this AMA here. Uh, we're gonna do our best to answer everybody's questions. Uh, uh, are you are you uh, apprehensive? Are you excited about uh, uh, letting uh, the the wild uh, audience that we have ask us whatever we want? Uh, to be honest, I'm super relieved. It's gonna be easy. It's gonna be easy. I can answer questions. But then again, I think like Chat Realm's pretty good at asking really bad questions sometimes wowzers yeah no yeah shots like, fired as in, like, shots not fired painting or bad as in get us in trouble uh yes to all of the above column a, column uh, a. yeah all right well mm. uh, 
Here all we- right, and just so everybody knows, reddit.com slash r slash diamond club is where uh, this all went down. If you uh, want to be uh, more a part of the community, head on over there. It's a great place to be. Yeah. Uh, so we got we got our first one here. This is a, this was this one's great. This is from JC Calhoun. What do you say when people ask what you do for a living and how do they react? Ooh, that that has evolved over time for yours truly. And in fact, Bonnie Bonnie's laughing because she said, "All right, so what do you want to say you do for a living this year?" <laughs> like like she has to fill out the same garbage paperwork every, every year. year. I have to say. They they have those forms for the kids that I mean they ask you the same questions in in the classroom at the administration at the nurse's office I mean there's like a million forms and they all they all say and what does dad do for a living mm. Well yeah, and and it, I used to say you know touring magician but then I figured out real quick that that's code for oh please I'm begging you to ask me to do a trick for you. Uh, 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 oh, yeah. And that's not that's not great. Yeah. No. So, so then what, what did it evolve to from there? Uh, it, it became entertainer. I know, but Just then all I can think of is that, is that, do that, song. Do like, that song. It's like Scott Joplin Inter- song. Oh, my God. do 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 and I'm still doing magic in your imagination. <laughs> Shit, what if I did that? Like a super <laughs> shitty magic version of my show to the entertainer. I walk out and I eat fire. <laughs> like I do all the same bits. All right, Brian, I had this idea when I was still covering magic to do a, like to learn, I, it would be worth it for me to learn magic enough, to learn enough slides to do a really hacky every magic competition kind of like show but then halfway through it gets shot in the head from the back of the audience <laughs> and just to lay death? there until somebody pulls you off right <laughs> and then i just realized that it would be like it would be i couldn't think of something that would be a parody that wouldn't just be exactly what everybody else is doing right like there's no way for me to sell this is a crappy magic routine because much of competition magic is not uh, poorly executed. It's very well executed, but it is very boring and very much like the 90,000 other ones that came before it. Yeah. Um, did, 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 so what did, do you call yourself? What do you say? Uh, is, I, I, is it entertainer? I, 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 say he's, he's, he's the entertainer. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm Scott Joplin. In fact, that's going to be what I write down from now. I'm, I'm like, Scott Joplin, and then parentheses, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Google it, bitch. Google it. I like it, the idea that it says Brian Brushwood, but it also says Scott Joplin underneath. Yeah, yeah. It's Brian Brushwood, comma Scott Joplin. Wait, what about you? What about you? Because I know, like, like you, you do, do a lot the of self-deprecating streaming. thing. Like on Twitter yeah. for a while, it, your your bio just said writer period yeller period. Yes. That, uh, and I uh, assume that that's a, a statement to the fact that you are a coward and you wouldn't go to war, right? <laughs> what? No. Oh, yeller. <laughs> Old yeller? <laughs> no, like oh. like his yellow. Like, oh, yellow belly. <laughs> what, what are you, like yeller? Yeller, yeller, yeller belly. Sorry. Never mind. Okay. Okay. Got you. Uh, number one, <laughs> yes, uh, uh, it is. Except it's because I, I grew up in an Old West cliche and I dishonored <laughs> my family by stealing an apple and shooting the sheriff. <laughs> Stealing an apple and shooting his- It's like, let me take some food and also commit <laughs> murder. A prominent <laughs> member of the community. I be known. And so an old man pops out and says, God damn it, boy, you're so yeller. And I said, well, I am. <laughs> I peed myself. <laughs> so so, uh, what, so what do you write? I always used to say... Uh, Back when I was with the Go Game, I used to just uh, want to get. Uh, I like to end that conversation as fast as possible. Usually, nine times out of ten. <laughs> so it's like, like, like somebody's halfway through the question, and you go, "All right, let me shut this shit down right now." Yeah. <laughs> look, look at me. Well, I want. <laughs> if that were socially acceptable, I would. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because I mean, you know, how many times is and what do you do? Is that a good conversation or a fun conversation for you? Right. Like, like we are the kind of people that if we want to, if we want to have an exchange on what we do, it'll either come up in conversation. Or we'll ask the other person what they do. So in general, like, I just I just don't like to have the the conversation. And so yeah. I used to always just say the worst version of whatever I was doing. So when I was at the Go Game, instead of saying, "Oh, I write scavenger hunts for a living" or something like that, that sounds intriguing. Right. I would just say corporate entertainment. 
Or no, corporate team building. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody. <laughs> Nobody wants a conversation <laughs> about was, that shit. <laughs> it was like uh, uh, in my mind, if and if they dare to ask, like, what does that mean? You're like, well, one time we put a check up, and they had to use their bodies in a pyramid to climb all the way up. That's the only way they could know that they could work together. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, that was that was pretty much it. Now I don't know. Now I can't get away with that anymore. So I don't know. I usually say podcaster. And I then, guess. Uh, how, okay, how many people, when you say podcast, even know what that word means? Uh, a lot of people know what it means. They have heard of the word. They say, but, oh, like cereal. Yes. No, that's – so there's 15% of the population that has no idea, and they're, like, frightened by the concept of electricity, and they're like, ah! Oh, God, what? A what? <laughs> Jesus. Sorry, this uh, is 15% of the population? 15% is like of the this. population yes. reacts like you just showed Frankenstein fire. By the way, you don't know how well this is resonating with Bonnie, who has to live in, in rural Texas. Uh, and then, like, 20 – no, like – 70% on top of that to say, oh, cereal. I love cereal. Or, and then the other rest of the percentage, because I'm not really keeping track, uh, are people who have listened to two podcasts and they're really eager to hip you to the second one. Okay. And it's always like, yeah, I listen to uh, S Town. <laughs> You're like, S, -S Town? And they're like, and yeah. then, then they get indignant. And they're like, you ever heard of S-Town? <laughs> well, no, that was the name of the serial spinoff, right? Oh, yeah. was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That sounds a real, sh yeah. Mm. I was yeah. hoping it no, was so they, like, But it's something else. It's like gigantic. <laughs> it's like another big. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry. All right, you get to okay. be that guy. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, all right, but that's, uh, yeah, that, that's, 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 that's how I, uh, that's how I deal with it. In general, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's okay now. I guess uh, I guess I was just trying to dance around the corporate team building thing. As soon as you tell people so, that you're like, oh, I make scavenger hunts. Like, oh, my God, let's talk about it. Yeah, I'll I'll try to avoid having to give the pitch. And so in, in doing so, sometimes you set a trap for yourself where it's like you avoid saying uh, what you do. And then like like maybe and so it ends up being worse. Like I'll be like, oh, I host like a YouTube channel. And they're all like, uh, like, like for a job. And then it's like, well, yeah. And we're like, wait, you can make money doing that. And we're like, well, y y yeah. And then it's like, well, so, so what happens? Like, like, uh, uh, you, you sell ads or, or like they get interested too interested too quick and it sucks anyway. You know anyway, I, so these are these are some of the unique hells that we deal with. Rest of the planet. Yeah, yeah. man, where, where's you know, the pity? Stop. Where's the right, save your pity? <laughs> stop giving your pity to Houston, Texas, and why don't you oh. move west a no. little oh, bit? No, Christ, no, no. Okay. Over Next the question. All right. What, what do you say, Bonnie? I, I just learned not to put artists down because then they say, oh, so you'll design our T-shirt. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm not that kind of artist. And then they look at you and you're like, they're like, well, what good are you? Mm. And I'm like, mm. Yeah, no, I definitely uh, not, I definitely showed Bonnie's uh, art, which, by the way, oh. is posted and available at sunshineclay.com. Oh. The site Ooh. looks awesome. The photos look awesome. The art is awesome. Definitely showed it Thank to someone you. who asked, uh, "Oh, lovely! So you like, uh, like you put flowers in them or something, or <laughs> like, like instantly was like functionally, what do you do with this?" And it was yeah, like, "Ooh, I know. yeah, about that." I was like, oh, "Well, and, and to be you, honest, you gotta say she's a non-functional artist." Well, <laughs> I mean, I mean, upon hearing the question, my my initial gut reaction was like. Girl, you got the coin. You do whatever you want with that shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, go for it. There's a little bit of that. Uh, all right. Hey, we got another question? Yeah. Uh, this is <laughs> nope. From... That was it. That's that it. was oh, the whole bit. Is... Uh, this is from Max Robot. Do you consider the hot dog to be a sandwich? Why or why not? <sighs> is a hot dog a sandwich? Looking for the final definitive takes. Brian Brushwood and Justin Robert Young is a hot How dog. How old is this? Two days ago. Like, uh, is it to the point where, like, people who were initially saying this are going to be, like, like deemed the olds? Or is it still hip with the kids asking the hot dog sandwich question? It's pretty recent because it, it, it's evolved, right? Because it's like, is pizza a sandwich? Well, you could make an argument. The calzone. 
a cow is a cow zone more well, of no, a yeah zone? i guess the, i guess the super og one was the was the horse sized ducks or the duck sized horses right well we got a lot of comments since the last time i checked so we could have a couple of those huh yeah, we might. All right. Anyway, uh, Brian, uh, there's only we're, one we're correct answer, him. which is rethink your life. That's that's the answer, Max Trollbach. Aww. It's like li literally, you had the full access to anything that we uh, that we uh, could say, and 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 you go, you're Yay. doing canned material. Come on. Yes. And yes, and yes, it's a sandwich, and you should rethink your life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, we got a we got a question here from Stephen Cogswell, uh, uh, Discs of Tron. Are there any other podcast shows that you like the where you like the format or the subject or host, but that have things that you wouldn't actually try to do in your own show? So, is there something that you respect in another show that doesn't fit in the shows that you guys do currently? I mean, I, th I think, I think, I think my angle on this is pretty. Uh, I, I'm gonna bet you can guess Justin Robert Young without me even saying what yours is. Yeah, yeah. Mm, no, <laughs> really? No, it's like it's like an active. I need to. I I I I, I really love uh, both Swadcast and Harmontown, and I need to actively keep myself from. Trying to be those things because I don't want to. I don't want to slide into imitation, right? It's like uh, yeah. I want to be our own thing. But, yeah, yeah. That's so a, that's okay. You can never be wait. Hold on. Hard. So oh, okay. So <laughs> uh, uh, I guess I guess I, I took that. I took that point differently. So you're saying, like, not things that you admire that just wouldn't fit on this show. Rather, things that you hear that you're like, I want to just do that. And I need to stop doing that. Correct. I, I need to I need to to actively fight against the desire to try to be a bad, you know, well, it, fake version of that. I, I guess what what Steven's question is, like, what are some of those things? Uh, other things. Right. Because um, not what show do you not want to imitate? It's like specifically what you... in the podcast universe. Right. Sure. OK. Or it uh, can be television, I guess. I. I that's just the most one-to-one. Uh, I got, one I got one. Got? Uh, uh, editing. Like, uh, I'm never go. I'm always going to record live to tape. I'm always going to do uh, uh, stuff that. Oh, but don't you, don't you, don't you like imagine? Don't you want me, baby? Uh, uh, like, imagine if you had unlimited resources. Can you imagine how much better we would sound if we were edited and somebody oh, curated God. all this stuff? Yeah. I mean, and could like shave stuff and and make it uh, good and uh, uh, have everything. I don't know. We do that for weird things, actually. Uh, yeah, it's it's a little invisible, but it's also really easy because weird things is an audio only show, so we're not yeah. having to cut video and trim. So weird things usually gets, uh, it, it between weird things and after things, it can be about forty to thirty to forty small edits. Oh it's wow! A lot of like it's some of it silences, some of it is like oh this whole bit uh, needs to be cut weird because they're talking about something on the stream that no one will care about on yeah. the podcast. Yeah. Um, Is that why every episode's seven minutes long? <laughs> I always thought. <laughs> but uh, Is that why we used to post them on Vine? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I, I feel a similar way, Justin, is like, I, I, I love all of these shows, but I also wonder what they would look like or if they were coming from a place where they would be edited. But they or, would be totally or to do different. another project. That's always been the one thing that I've really wanted to do is a project that would just be more written and edited. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's, you know, it's a very specific skill, and that costs cash, which is why we don't do it because it's expensive and it's time it's time consuming and it's a lot easier to just joke about old balls. So wait, wait, is this time to mention Patreon? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's about to be. Apparently, Mike TV is is give, is tearing us up in the chat, saying that we should but just buy a compressor. He says we do need it's, to get a it's fifty dollar right? purchase for a million dollars of sound. Hmm. Uh, wait, is that is he just like randomly commenting on our audio uh, setup? A uh, li little bit, little bit. Well, the weird thing, little the, bit. The reason like a compressor isn't like an urgent got to get it right now is because in every show. Fifty to seventy-five percent of the hosts are on Skype, and which Skype which automatically compresses. compresses. Yeah, right. So like, yes, yes, Mike, yes, compression sounds great. But also, uh, if you only listen to the live streams, or if you only listen to Night Attack, which I don't think gets this, uh, like Cord Killers and Weird Things get compressed after the fact, so that they sound fuller. So also, you know, I've got an idea, guys. 
Yeah. What okay. if we got an auto tuner and we just auto tuned you through the whole thing? Oh my God! Hold on. Justin has <laughs> a sound effects machine. Well, he has a sound effects. Yeah. Oh. I I I want to or, or avoid. Do you want to do <laughs> the maybe next maybe I'll, maybe I'll get an auto tune. Wait. Do you have auto tune on there, Justin? Uh, yeah, hold on. <laughs> oh, no, oh, man, man, Kylo Ren. Uh, how about this one? How about this? Let's go. Let's get the pitch a little higher. Get the pitch a little higher, everybody. Here we go. Here we go. Maxing out on the effects. Uh, moving that reverb. <laughs> Sure. Are you happy now, Bonnie? Yes. <laughs> That's all she wanted for the rest of the show like this. Uh, we're just hanging out. Anyway, I mean, so what What do you tell people when they ask you what you do for a living, Brian? I <laughs> say I'm an entertainer. Do 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 do. Eric, can, can you sing uh, the entertainer? That's great. That's great. Bryce, you know, editing. Ah, yeah. uh, what are we going to get the time? <laughs> Actually, though, I, I will say, as far as editing goes, for weird things, right? Uh, I, you know, I've got this this time code app that I use to keep track of all the the syncs and stuff. So it's actually like in a case like this where we have someone dedicated to like the production side of all of this, that is is not too much added time in terms of like going and adding those edits and keeping track of them in real time. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's it's an interesting thing. I I well, always sounds like a lot of effort. Anyway, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> no, damn it, you beat me to it. I was gonna say it. <laughs> All right, we got another question here from uh, Hot Beverages. She asks, "How how is it having fans? How does it feel to have people excited to meet you? Is it overwhelming?" Ah, uh, my little question. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, you guys have been in this pool for a while. Yeah. Um. Let me let Justin so, yeah. go first. Uh, I mean, well, Dragon Con, really, Dragon Con's the first time I ever felt, like, famous in a place, right? Like, you're not, you don't feel famous like you are, like, a movie star or somebody that, like, is always, like, that your guard is always up, that someone's going to recognize you. But at certain places, you are somebody that people will come up to and talk to. Dragon Con was the first time that I experienced that on, on any kind of level. Uh, and, you know, it's... Uh, to be honest, it's not overwhelming meeting people. It's overwhelming sometimes worrying about not meeting everybody or coming off like a douchebag or or having that like the worst thing on earth is the is the tweet five minutes after you left a group of people that says, oh, man, I saw at Justin R. Young, but didn't get a chance to say hi. Shucks, maybe uh, in five years from now when I next come here, like my once-in-a-lifetime opportunity ruined. And it's like I, it just crushes me that I can't, you know, be everything to everybody in those situations. Yeah, that's what, uh, like, uh, like Josie is at nine years old. She's about to turn ten. She's just old enough to like have been around for some experiences. Like we were at a restaurant and somebody came over and asked for an autograph, um, which happens like in the wild, maybe once a year. Right. Yeah. But she was there for that. And she was just like, oh, my God, that would be so amazing to be famous or whatever. And it's like, kiddo. Yes. And um, uh, and then I explained to her the fundamentals of improvisation. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> but then like ultimately it just creates this low grade paranoia at all times because um as i'm fond of pointing out the tally is always the same i owe the fans everything they owe me nothing which also means like as as we get more visible um you know like like i i tried to explain to her like well for example right now you're just eating your food you're not really concerned with how many eyeballs are around right now but i am very attuned to the fact that there are 40 to 60 people right now and any one of yeah. them might be snapping a hilarious photo of, of brian eating an enchilada like a slob yeah. or whatever for, for, uh, 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 r slash uh, uh youtuber eats with a z <laughs> and it's just candid pictures of youtubers with it. food in their mouth okay you realize oh you just wished God. that into existence i can't oh believe you did that also, <laughs> my here's nightmare. philip defranco with a churro <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So, um, uh, also, you should really not eat enchiladas like that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, they taste better when they go in and out and in and out of your mouth a few times. I keep telling you, girl. 
so yeah, I mean, uh, uh, all, all in all, it's it's amazing meeting people though. I mean, that's that's probably the biggest thing oh, yeah. that's super rad about it. Beyond, because uh, because here's another hot tip. Uh, you will feel good about yourself that people know your work for the first time, and then you will meet people again. And either in between then you will uh, be suspicious <laughs> that, that, you know, they are uh, liking the right things or it will begin to become normal. And at that point, really, the only thing that matters is not the, the, the idea that people are gratifying your work, <laughs> but rather your relationship to them. Here's already slash r slash YouTuber eats. <laughs> oh, my God. Really? Is there anything yes. on there? No. Yes. Sure. Uh, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this much. Like, um, out of everything we've ever done, um, I think the biggest surprise to me, and I and I wonder if if they're listening. I forget who it who it was, but do you remember the first Dragon Con we went to that people showed up cosplaying as as Spiro and the Fudge from Weird yeah. Things? That'd be three, three or four. Uh, that, that that went down. That was that was the Diamond Club uh, week or Di Diamond Club year. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That uh, that oh, was that was the year before. I don't know. Truly extraordinary. That was amazing. That 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 like hit me on a very deep level. Yeah, if you want to really, uh, uh, you know, be uh, be in our hearts, uh, then cosplay as us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! No, when uh, uh, she goes by butts or something. What's Viking last. Yeah, April. Viking last. Like, she she goes by butts. I don't know why she changed. Wait, that, butts. that's she the title of her auto. <laughs> that's the title of her autobiography. <laughs> she, <laughs> she goes, goes by, by butts. butts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just blanking on the name. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if she Viking goes last. By <laughs> she goes by butts. That's the way my mind thinks. <laughs> but anyways, when she showed up and cosplay as Brian from the '90s. Oh, Bonnie amazing. lost it. I yeah. couldn't believe it. <laughs> oh, I was trying to coax Brian down the mountain to come see it, and and Brian was stiff arming me. Okay, well, uh, okay. because I was genuinely lost at the top of the mountain <laughs> with Will okay, Harris. You were not portraying that. You were like, I'm like Brian. You should really come down here. And the the reply was like, <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm just living uh, God's life at the top of God's <laughs> mountain, having a beer, enjoying everything that that the world has to offer. And I'm like. I don't want to spoil it, so uh, I'm like, like, okay, inspirational poster, but also you need to get down here immediately because you'll really like what you see down here. And it was like, oh, I don't know, man. I'm seeing clouds and sun. Uh, all the cheese flowing inside me, bro. Like, it is all the cheese. All the, all the enchiladas I just deep-throated. I just tongue fucked an enchilada, motherfucker. Uh, and then, uh, uh, yeah. And then and then later, you get like, yeah, we got lost trying to walk down. <laughs> I texted you. I was like, no, come on. You're like, sorry. I'm I'm having a great time on the mountain, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, what Everybody, else we got, we got, Bryce? We got another question here from Open Bayou. Has Diamond Club ever had a moment that made you, that you were proud of? And similarly, was there a moment of Diamond Club that you were embarrassed of? The proud of? I don't think I realized that we had formed some kind of very strange family until that story we got from an EMT who was there on the scene and uh, oh god yeah and one of our own tribe had um, uh, died in a motorcycle accident and his his he was wearing a Diamond Club T-shirt and uh, his phone was was playing Night Attack and yeah uh, like that hit me very very hard that hit me very very hard to to so realize that, that like like that's what it means. It's wonderful to have a very big family because there's so much joy and and so much um, support, but yeah. it also means you wear your heart on the outside of your body and you can be effective. Yeah. So that would be, that would be I, I guess, like one one half of both, uh, uh, and proud proud or embarrassed, or is that its own its own little mixture? I, I, it's just the the most powerful feeling I've had. Right. I mean, it's uh um yeah. Uh, and, and, and also like, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the diamond time segment 
was something that we never really discussed adding to the show. When we went yeah. independent, just sort of, Justin just sort of declared that was going to be part of it now. And I was yeah. just like, well, okay, I'll go along with it. And uh, it really uh, has has affected me, you know, to 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 see, you know, that 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 one opportunity to give everything back and to have a conversation and make it a two way street. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I would say, proud of is a, is is an insane list. I mean, I would say probably the biggest, the biggest moment of pride was was being escorted into a uh, NPR studio so i could be on on the media for the diamond club which was just insane that whole diamond club project was just like uh, uh such high octane amazingness that it just kept building and building and building and becoming cooler and cooler and more interesting uh and and that moment realizing that like i was being talked to for like our internet horse shit was just like <laughs> Like uh, what? Embarrassed, embarrassed of. Uh, I don't know. The funny thing is that all the embarrassment parts are always like, uh, are always like the 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 big spectacular failures. Failures are always kind of funny. Um. So really, I don't know. E embarrassed, nothing publicly. I think sometimes like inner inner diamond club squabbles. Uh, uh, hurt my hurt my heart a little bit. Uh, but you know that just happens in any community. Yeah. Uh, okay, we got a question here from Slider. Uh, he's got three questions. Uh, number one, uh, favorite type of pizza? We can go real. A hot dog is a sandwich. It's just toppings. I don't know. What's your favorite? You got a favorite uh, oh, topping? no, no, no. My, mine's always it's uh, thin crust. If you have a thick yeah. crust, you can get bent and go to hell. Chicago style pizza is garbage. Uh, the best type of, kind of pizza is you won't you won't you won't give your opinion on a hot dog being a sandwich, but you will start some pizza shit. Oh man, no! I'm gonna set fire to the internet over this pizza shit. Um, the uh, uh, it's got to we'll be. We'll never play Chicago, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, uh, thin crust, okay. so that when you bite, it ever so slightly crisps and crunches. You know, crunk, crunk, crunk. Um, and then uh, also, it's not like you know eating doughy grease sponges or All whatever. All right, it's the flat bread. Okay, and um, red sauce. Uh, bell peppers and breakfast bacon. Breakfast bacon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Justin. Yeah, yeah. God. Well, Jesus, diva. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, and 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 chives thinly sliced. Uh, <laughs> I live alone and I podcast with Justin. <laughs> uh, I, I will say sausage and pepperoni for the pizza. Mm -mm -mm. I'm I'm meat lovers all the way. Uh, what is the origin of the Schwid spikes? That's part two. That uh, it's it's. Well documented that you wanted to look like Guile. Yeah, but but what's less well documented is the journey that got me there. Is because um, uh, and 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 I I try to explain this to people, and I don't know if it really sticks. Imagine there was a time before social media where it was entirely possible that you would go on a Thursday night uh, along with six hundred other people, watch an entire hour and a half long stage show. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks later, have no memory of this person's name, and and a year later. When you see another magician, your brain's able to say, I saw a magician once. And then that person would say, tell me literally anything about them. And they're like, oh, no, he was real funny. And he just, you know, he had this big personality and uh, and um, uh, that's that's what you're fighting against. And And even if your gimmick is as dumb as he wore an orange suit then that's at least a hook that when you see it later, like that's the guy I saw before. So you need yeah. something sticky. Uh, I, 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 for a while I had a uh, uh, long hippie hair down to my nipples. Uh, yeah, I had uh, the neon colored hair. I did. I had, I had bright green hair, uh, for a good two or three years, but bright green hair. And, and again, it's hard to even remember this, but it was, it was enough that people would be like on guard, like, like they, they would, you know, it was, it was a thing. And, and, oh, there's that rave punk. Uh, yeah. They're they like, what are you trying to prove with that hair? And I'm like, that I like hey. green what are you going to do? Put me in a K hole. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and so ultimately the spikes were curious, but, but, uh, but and sticky enough, but non-threatening. Mm. And it tapped into that video game industry or, or, or imagery that I liked a lot. Uh, the, the third question on, or the last bit of this question from slider was Bryce, uh, why are you so wet? And how did that meme originate? Uh, that was from a pre-show only a couple months ago. Where someone found a clip, a trailer that I cut together from the podcast I was doing, 
How long ago was that? Almost oh yeah, five years <laughs> yeah. Ago. You see, you said that makes me wet. And there was yeah, a yeah. clip of me saying that makes me wet, uh, and so that's how that came to be. Uh, yeah, yeah. But seriously, why are you so wet? But also, yeah. But that can we get a pH? <laughs> pH. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I mean, it was a really long time ago. I have. I have really. Not blocked out. You that. dried up since then. <laughs> yeah. I've, yeah. I've, I've, now, now you need a little oh, extra oh, lubricant. Oh, crispy Gulch. <laughs> crispy Gulch. Oh my God. That's his internet no, nickname. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Who's gonna cosplay as Bryce's Crispy Gulch? <laughs> I don't know if it's a step up or a step down from Tony. Suck B. my tumbleweeds, <laughs> Crispy Gulch. Uh, <laughs> he kicks in the door. He's like, Duff Man. He's like, Crispy Gulch, bitches. Yeah. <laughs> so, my listeners. Pulse is dry as a lizard on a rock. That's my penis. <laughs> Crispy Gulch. <laughs> This is, I just want to let everyone know who's interested in getting into the creative arts, the entertainment business. <laughs> Opening yourself up does this. <laughs> yeah. When you open wide, you get that crispy gold. Am I right? Bryce, here's the problem, man. I'll tell you what. If you're going to go TriCast, you have to understand that sometimes the eye of Sauron will move towards you. <laughs> hey, man. My name is Christopher P uh, uh, penis Gulch. <laughs> <laughs> Crispy P. Gulch. Crispy Gulch. Sorry. Crispy P. Gulch. I love Crispy P. Gulch. Crispy. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got a question here from Captain Jack. Uh, are there any thoughts of taking Night Attack on the road more than South by Southwest, Nertacular, Rest in Peace, and Dragon Con? We, um, we don't have a plan to fill the nurtacular hole yet. Well, I think the idea would be, like, you know, uh, Double Toasted is, uh, you know, they just sold out a show in New York, right? Like, Brian and I have never, never done a ticketed event for Night Attack that wasn't part of a con. Um, we did that dry run in San Francisco. San Francisco. Where I think we went uh, over, and, uh, over, over and beyond what we thought we were going to do. Uh, certainly, it was enough to say we could probably run another show that had tickets this time. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. It's really just a matter of uh, of of uh, here's all right. Here's the answer to any. Why don't you do blank questions? Can, can can I answer for you? Yeah, go. How crispy and where's the gulch? <laughs> Those are the two questions, right? No, no. Okay, sorry. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Justin? If you see crispy gulch on the side of the road, <laughs> look out! <laughs> crispy <Dry> nuts <laughs> toasted. <laughs> if you see a wilted lizard on the side of the road, he could have escaped from the crispy gulch. All right. Uh, all right. So, wait, what were we talking about again? Uh, uh, live shows. Why live we don't live shows. Do All right, live shows. so here's the deal. Uh, Brian used to be totally dedicated to touring, and that was a full-time job. He is no longer doing that, so uh, uh, I would assume that Brian's motivation to then go back into a new untested field to try to book a live event is something that would not appeal to his sensibilities. I have booked other stuff, but certainly not anything like this before, nor do I have the time uh, in my mind right now. So the question is, who would do it? Uh, I think, Brian, if, if somebody came to us and said, Brian, Justin, here's great news. We're a theater in Chicago, and we would love to book you for Night Attack, and this is how much you would get, and this is what the times would be. Brian and I would probably clear our schedules. We would move things to make it happen. It's just the zero to one of like, all right, what city and where should we go and what kind of theater and where should we do this? Like, that's, although, that, although I'll tell that's you, kind of like, hard. in terms of uh, in in uh, in one hundred percent right on didn't, all of those. Didn't you guys have a New Year's Eve show in Florida? Mm. <laughs> See, Florida. that's that's another bad example of of you know like part of the reason why we didn't do another non-con live show until like seven years and two shows later. <laughs> uh. 
the uh, uh, y- yes to all of that. Although I do think we're kind of on to something with you doing your OPP show and me being able to just be Andy Richter to your Conan O'Brien. Uh, I, I did enjoy that quite a bit. And um, I, I, I can totally envision some kind of three hour live show bonanza that's uh, a mixture of like I do <clears throat> uh, 30 to 40 minutes of the, the stage magic show. And then, okay. and then you do right. OPP, and then I were to, and then we and, both and do. And hold on, wait, I, I, and I don't want to, I don't want to cut you off, but this is also illustrative of kind of the problem, is that we love this show, we love this audience, we love this experience. Safe to say, Brian, like what they're asking is, when are you going to do Night Attack live? Would you go do night attack somewhere? And and I know your immediate reaction is like, let me put it in, next in to Brian's other head. Things. It says night attack is not for the outside of my house. <laughs> no night attack outside my house <laughs> unless the government That's... asks. And and uh, so it's like, okay, quick pivot. Well, why don't I do magic? And I think you've got a real good <laughs> I, one man and, show. And it's, it's not that night attack is not for the outside world. It's that specifically night attack is is designed to to be like, man, you got to It's it's like hitting your head with a sledgehammer. It feels real good when it stops. You know, it's like, uh, uh, it, it, it's a trial by fire. It's like, it's, it's, if somebody is new. And in fact, I would love to hear from everyone. Uh, not, not everyone, most of you, uh, a few of you, I would like one or two of you to write me about how you discovered night attack. And because it's so unpalatable at first glance, but then again, like so is Rick and Morty. I I turned Rick and Morty off the first time I saw it because it's it's just you know I get it. He's burping while he's talking. That's kind of eh, I don't know. And then eventually you got past it, and it's like oh shit, there's some really smart, funny stuff in here, right? But there are rules mm-hmm. uh, to it to enjoy it. I think Night Attack is the same way, and so because it's so unapproachable uh, is is probably the right word. Um, that's my concern. Uh, unpalatable at first. It's a terrible show. We do a terrible you, show, Justin. I don't Justin. know why you give the worst sell for Night Attack. It's, it is a good show. Okay. Eventually. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no? Well, I, no. But here's the funny thing about that is that there's we're more likely to run into random people who have not heard of our show at a con, which we do all the time. Sure. Well, yeah, but that's that a pre-qualified a audience. event where only people who know the show are going to come see the show. Like, it's not like we're going to get a lot of cross traffic at some random theater where it's like, oh, oh, the black box theater. I wonder what they have uh, in store tonight. Ah, uh, Night Attack, a podcast. Sure, I'll put down my $10. Uh, entertain me, boys. $10, oh, man. <laughs> I, I mean, that's what I would imagine it is. And and maybe mm-hmm. maybe I just want to be overly self-deprecating on this. And uh, I, I, it occurs to me that every time I do that, maybe I am making people feel bad. Like, hey, man, I'm part of this tribe. I'll, Don't talk about our, our favorite jam. Night Attack and NSFW show were very influential and powerful forces for and so it is always sometimes a little weird to be like, oh, it's my poop joke and dick podcast. And like, uh, well, it's more than that. I don't mean for funny. it to be a poop, poop, EP, balls, dick, uh, cash the check. <laughs> I think Brian, I think Brian really made a good analogy saying it's like Rick and Morty because I, I agree. It's just like, yeah, on the, on certain surfaces, but there's a lot of depth like, and intrigue. In yeah, like, like, like if, but, if you're going to say Rick and Morty, you're like, yeah, it's all poop jokes. You'll notice all the aliens are vaginas. Um, say that, and if they get past that and discover just how brilliant the writing is and how good the yeah, the, Brian, you're so brilliant. The script, you're super tight. See, this is this why this why. <laughs> but also, poop, but malls, dick. <laughs> back, blah, blah. But also, I don't know. That's uh, uh, I guess. Let's so. get back at that crispy gulch. Yeah. Am I right? Yay! <laughs> uh, all right, we got a question here from BS for free. Uh, we'll start with Justin. F. Mary Kill. Pick one of your show co-hosts to kill. One to marry and one to fuck. Uh, okay. I'll no, I kill. started with Justin. Oh, sorry. You started all these, Justin. Oh, God. All right. Do I do a show with women? <laughs> it's a genuine question. With who? I don't think I do. I don't think I do a show with a single woman. Oh, wait. Hold on. Uh, well, yeah, no. Jerry do... Moore. I'd fuck my wife. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, shit. Would I marry or fuck my wife? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, the whole point of that podcast was to marry each other. Yeah, but to be honest, that wasn't my favorite part. Uh, yeah, I'm going to – I would rather fuck my wife uh, uh, and then 
<laughs> you know, I'll here. just like, cause really the calculus on that is I just got to explain to her, listen, I mean, you know, you're my number one, but I, <laughs> I, for the sake of this bizarre bargain, I have to marry someone else. I'm sorry. It's a bargain. Uh, so I would marry Brian and oh. I would, uh, kill, uh, <laughs> Body, body, what are you cheering? Why are you... What the fuck? He kills you guys all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I would, uh, I would, I would kill. Uh... Oh man! <laughs> now I'm just telling one of my friends to die. <laughs> like this isn't even like a thing about me. This is just about like what clip am I gonna? Yeah. I'd kill. All right, I'm on the morning stream. I'd kill Scott Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Clip it. Clip it and send it to him. Let him know. <laughs> Scott Johnson's got a target on his back. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, I guess I'm not on the morning stream. They're off tomorrow. All right. So I would marry, of all my co hosts, I would marry the one with the salt and pepper beard. Oh, no, I'd fuck on. the one with the salt and pepper beard, and I'd kill the one with the salt and pepper beard. Uh, shit. I mean, shit. Justin, Justin just. Took his junk out. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Uh, uh, I would, I would fuck Justin. Oh, nice. I would marry Jason Murphy because we're already like, like everyone asks, like, so these guys are an old married gay couple, right? <laughs> like, like that's like the number one comment we get. Yeah. And I would kill uh, Tom Merritt for no other reason wow. than because he would be like, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, okay, go for it. <laughs> Like, he would be really kind and polite about it. Yeah. Can I save this real quick? Okay. Uh, yeah. Real quick. Gotcha. Scott, I just have audio hijack running. I just need to really. Yeah. Uh, I just got to post this real quick. And okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, all right. We got a question from BS for free. Uh, he does a sponsor mid murder. <laughs> he's like, he's uh, like, this episode brought to you, ah, by, brought to you by knives. Actually, let's 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 actually do a sponsor. Uh, patreoncom slash night attack is where you can support this show. Uh, head on over there right now and go ahead and be a, a part of uh, of everything. Be a part of the experience, the lights, the glitz, the glamour. It's patreon.com slash night attack. That's right. Head on over to patreon.com slash night attack. Give us money and you have a chance to hear your name shouted out on this segment. This that's coming segment, up in one which second. we love to call. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the night attack. New Patreon name chant corner hour. It's an hour of. <laughs> yeah, explain explain the bit while I look. So, this up. Uh, uh, if you if you are a patron at night attack dot, pa at patreon dot com slash night attack, you get uh, MP three RSS uh, early uh, early access to the after show and the pre show. Get it in one one big feed. Get early. You need it Man. on YouTube. Uh, and also, you just get the insider sauce. Uh, you get access to the Diamond Lounge in our Discord, nightattack.tv yep. slash Discord. Uh, and if over the course of the week, or 72 hours, you upgrade your pledge to over a dollar, uh, Brian will look through his email while I vamp uh, yep. just briefly for him to find a name uh, like this person. Yeah, man. I don't know what this person's doing, but I bet... Uh... What 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 exercise machine are they on? We haven't we haven't <laughs> done this. They're, they're in a usually working out. Everybody who's listening to this right now is working out right now. All right, this one. And this is the weird one. This one is actually doing Zumba, but oh. is not listening to the music, <laughs> which is doing why Zumba to a podcast. He, he's listening to a podcast, <laughs> which is why none of his movements matches the rest of the room, and it's really awkward. But I just want to say to you, don't feel weird. Vile. 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 You disgust me. Birds flying around him. They're like, Vile. Vile. Ow, ow, ow. 
Thank you very much, Vile. He's the third. Uh, hey, by the way, and also, <laughs> while uh, uh, are we going to turn the turn the alerts on here? Yeah, the box is on. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, here's the deal. Uh, yeah, if you want to subscribe right now to our, uh, our our Twitch channel, we are doing it like all the Twitch folks do with big ass gaudy alerts. Brian, I want to direct your attention though. Uh, thank you to ICU and Curtis Larock. Uh, to uh, reddit.com slash r slash youtuber eats with a z god damn it uh the, the content is filling up on the hottest new subreddit uh okay i'm ch i'm going there right now youtuber the spiky hair dude on youtube eats stuff hashtag just like us <laughs> uh, <laughs> <you> <laughs> uh dirty pig which is from uh your your oh. pen tellers bit <laughs> Well, I'm not even eating. Oh, I, I guess I did. I, I, I ate the dollar. Ate the dollar, right? <laughs> uh, of oh, course. look, there, there's Robert Benford. Yeah, Robert <laughs> Benford <laughs> eating, eating, eating coffee. Coffee. And then, of course, oh, this classic photo of you eating fire. Uh, uh, thank you, WJ says. <laughs> it's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, they're the best room. They're the best room. Uh, all right, everybody, go ahead, check us out. Of course, we stream live on twitch.tv slash night attack every, normally, every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Pacific! What's the next question? Our next question also comes from BS for free. Uh, how do you make money doing this podcasting thing? No, really, how do you do it? Uh, as this is all of yours full-time jobs, hashtag living the dream. Uh, I mean, it's diversification, right? Everyone yeah, has I mean, I mean, keep, keep, uh, uh, spoiler alert, it's not just from this. It's, it's, a, it's a, a delightful collage of multiple streams of income. Uh, this being one of them, uh, this, this, the moment that we quit and went independent, um, this became all of a sudden one of our most valued gigs, uh, yeah. but, but only one of our gigs, there's no way we could, I, I don't know if we ate ramen and we're single, we could, <laughs> could you imagine if this was our only gig and we just like all week, like just talked on the phone, like, fuck man, what are we going to do on Tuesday? <laughs> Yeah, what are we gonna uh, do like, on it's, Tuesday? It's uh, it ain't it ain't bad money. Uh, but it certainly wants to. It, it is it is part of a balanced breakfast. It is it is not uh not not the full buffet, but so so important. Like everybody who donates, like I cannot express enough how life changing and important it is. That uh, it, it is my hope. It is my hope that everybody who participates in Patreon, uh, feels very little sting with their donation, but understands that they make a huge, huge impact to us. Oh my God, no, uh, it, it it literally changed my life. Uh, uh, the, the day that Night Attack went independent, all of a sudden I was making, you know, uh, pretty much double salary between what I was getting paid with the, uh, the Go game and, and all the ancillary stuff. And then on top of that, uh, you know, it, it kept growing and was stable and went for a year and I jumped out on the raft and started the jury Patreon, and between those two, those are those are my biggest sources of income. Is is uh, if I can combining the jury Patreon and, and and the Night Attack Patreon are are the biggest things, and then you know you get the the, the DTNSs and the yeah yeah and the stickers and everything kind of adds together. Yeah, uh, we got a we we've touched on this topic at some point maybe maybe it's an after thing thing but from j king 206 what advice would you give to a creative person who is too afraid to put themselves out there for fear of scrutiny how does one ignore the thoughts that they that what they have created is never good enough i mean a check out the after things podcast go to weirdthings.com and subscribe uh but i mean uh, you guys both have a storied history of telling people to do creative stuff right well here's all right number one here's your problem you don't ignore the thoughts like you, you, there is no ignoring those thoughts. You have to meet those thoughts. You have to, uh, 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 you have to tame that tiger. You don't, you don't just like ignore the tiger existing. You got to figure that out, and that's part of the process of getting yourself out there and and coming to peace with the fact that the things that you were, some of the things you were worried about are valid, and it means you got to improve. And some of the things you were worried about were bullshit, and Man, it means that you were too scared. I just watched Bonnie perk up square her shoulders <laughs> and lean into the microphone what you got girl yeah um there is a fabulous um app called headspace with uh meditation um it's like a yeah the, fir it, the first 10 sessions are free like yeah, it's, they're, it's they're really good but i i would say the one that is uh f 
is specifically for this is the self-esteem pack, which is, it talks about, you know, you have all these thoughts and you have feelings and it, and it's 30 sessions. Cause they say, Oh no, it's going to take a while. You're going to have to work on this Yeah, because you are, you even without negative thoughts, you don't need to worry about it. Like you can still be awesome without the negative thoughts. And I love that. And it's, it's really helped me put myself out there with a, with my work. So. Uh, Von Hunting Tate, Hun, Von Hung Taint. Uh, <laughs> how, how crispy is his goal? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me, let me just, I'm just going to say words. Um, uh, recommends The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, uh, oh, yeah. which, which I enjoyed very, very much. It was really, really good. Awesome. Uh, it's a, uh, um, man, I hate to say it, just picture, picture the best, most interesting version of you at age 70 and ask that person, for war stories and battle stories and my guess is whatever version of you you're picturing they're not going to come back and say no everything uh you know is pretty easy and uh never really had any moments that were tough uh everyone pretty much liked my stuff and uh, the answer was go very slow keep everything to yourself and only release when you're sure it's great uh and that's Which how i you got will know in a big clear moment as the heavens open up and God's finger points at your thing and says, <laughs> it is ready. Release it, my son. <laughs> no. Yeah. And of course, uh, you know, the reality is it's going to be miserable. It's going to be miserable. And in, when you're age 70, you're going to be covered in emotional battle scars and you're going to have stories that are way more epic than anything you've ever experienced up until this moment. It really is going to war. I think that's a good analogy. Um, and just decide every time you eat a bag of dog shit that it's like <laughs> that that that. Why you the should, fuck am I eating dog shit? This you should buy ramen instead. I, I it's really just wanted to. Do, I could have painted. I could have. Uh, I could have been an architect. You know. And here I am no. eating dog shit. Just whatever you do. Like like understand everything is written in in sharpie. And so there it's not, like there are more stories that people tell of bad times than of good. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and understand the bad times will be really painful, yeah. but uh, you, you don't get to play the game without having those. You will have a worst day of doing your art ever. There will be like measurably, you're going to be dead and gone and somebody will uh, can look back over your entire body of work and point and say, this is definitively the worst they ever did. So, so what? So what? You're just, you're just going to be dead in dirt someday anyway. Might as well. You know, it's like what a what a crime to not get to sing because you're too afraid to crow, you know? I don't and know. also like if if we're talking about worst moments, A, everyone's gonna have a worst point just because that's <laughs> how relative worst works. moments is but, yours. Uh, but but it would be way it makes more sense and is probably a whole better thing if your worst point is at the start of your journey than fucking That's where at they the belong. End. Right. Oh no. The one. The one thing that the worst possible thing that could happen is that you did good initially, and then you are way too far north for what your skill set is, and you totally eat shit, and you're branded a failure forever. Here's the other thing uh, uh, to close out on with this: talent's a myth. There's no such thing. It was invented by uh, uh, old uh, uh, Satan. tricksters. Satan, so, Krusty so, Gulch. You. Uh, yeah. You. Uh, the only thing that matters is keeping at it and 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 showing up and doing it like. Honestly, you can have zero talent at any artistic endeavor if you make sure you are around when money starts happening for that endeavor, you will be a part of it, let alone if you put forth effort and, and become great at your craft. And by the way, if you have zero talent, uh, just find yourself a category that is unoccupied and by virtue of being there first, you are the world's best at it. There's a reason I named my magic show Bizarre Magic because in the public's mind, that was not a category that was occupied. So by virtue of naming it, I owned it and was the best in the world at it. Yeah. yeah. All right. We got a, we have a very, we have another serious hard hitting question here from Joe Mon. Uh, he asks, are nugs better dipped in mayo or mustard? And the, Shut Fuck up. The entire premise of this question confuses me. That I, I, I hate it. both of those, and I would go with mustard. I mean, even I know that mustard is better than mayonnaise, yeah. for Christ's sake. And granted, I think ketchup plus mayo or mustard plus mayo are, is better than either of these com solo. You, you like that. Mustard? Wait, oh, like Dijonese? Is that what it's called? All, yeah. all I know is mustard Fancy is sauce. not mayonnaise. 
you you like all that I know. Yeah, Mr. is mayo is fucking gross. I mean, I, I don't know. Do, do I want? Do I have to? Do I? Am I, am I gonna have to do the whole devil's jizz bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Satan's jizz. Give it. Give it to it. Uh, fill right. my crispy so gulch. Rough. Number one, crispy gulch. You can back me up on this. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So you have mayonnaise. Mmm. Whipped eggs, Thick, right? Viscous, gross. Mm. All right. Yeah. Nobody likes it. If anybody puts it on their sandwich, just and oh, it moistens the sandwich. Stick it in the sink, you fucking weirdo. If you want moisture <laughs> oh, so much. God. <laughs> All right. The sandwich is the sandwich. That's it. Just run, run it under a cold it, tap. <laughs> The show okay. Stick it in a sink. <laughs> so here's the other problem, and this is something that I've, I've documented before. You say no mayonnaise. Fine. Oh Jesus Christ! Don't, don't you get me started on this. I have abused the homeless over this issue. Oh. Here's the problem. What you have to understand is that the biggest bank in the world is owned by the Rothschild family. <laughs> And a decade ago, there were seven countries that were not uh, clients of the bank. And today, there are four. You want to know who the three were? What? Afghanistan, <laughs> Iraq, and Syria. And now they are all Rothschild clients. Because. What is that? What is that? Oh, wait. He's got to because. He's got to because. Because. When you go to a restaurant and you order a sandwich, they will put mayonnaise on that sandwich because it just goes with it. Sorry, that's fucked up. That's gross. You shouldn't call it uh, whatever else, uh, uh, aioli. You shouldn't call it some other stuff. And the Rothschild family runs the world's monetary fund and has directed the flow of human civilization for the last 150 years. Man, I'm glad. I'm glad we got that out on Front Street, man. Yeah. All right, just same old bit that I always do about mayonnaise. Do <laughs> <laughs> tight five on mayonnaise. All right, we got a question here from Magnetic Couch. If someone made a video game with you as the main character, what kind of game would you want it to be? Like a role-playing game, a beat-em-up, a first-person shooter, etc. There was a game with Brian as a main character. It's called Street Fighter 2? No. Uh, <laughs> there was a game that was made, a demo for a mobile game that was made. Wait, Brian, have you never seen this? I don't think I have. It was a Game On thing. It was when Game On was first launching that these people that I've run into at, a, at uh, I forget, I think maybe it's Hack 5 Functions or something like that. Uh, or is it Conley? I don't know. Uh, some social circle here in San Francisco. But they do 3D modeling for a job, and they were going to do a game with but Brian and Veronica as the main characters, and it was a three-quarter view kind of uh, isometric. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, like running around picking up stuff. But it was either you were you could pick you or Veronica to choose from. Like, but it was a game on thing. It was it was at least in mock-ups, and then they wanted to see whether or not uh, you know if the if the game if the podcast was popular, sure, and they could money and everything. But yeah, they they loved uh, the two of you, and I saw. Hot. God, I think I only saw it on their phone, but I saw pictures of it. My wow. God, I would love to see that. That's that's astonishing. That's wonderful. That's great. Brian wants to change his answer. He's like, wait, do I get a pick from old co-hosts <laughs> for the? Uh, oh Jesus, <laughs> Bonnie! <laughs> Come on. <laughs> for the fuck, Mary killed God. Oh jeez. <laughs> Sorry. I'm no, I changed like... nothing. <laughs> Justin, what? what I'm would... gonna fuck Justin. Period. He's on my. Li He's one of my five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Justin? If you had a Justin Robert Young game, Jury colon the game. Wait. Oh Jerry man, Cole. I would probably have it be a, uh, a, 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 a just a total clash of clans uh, rip, and uh, it would it would just be. Top-down warfare uh, featuring only the most annoying catchphrases of the 40 characters that all sound alike that I've done on the show. Man, I'll tell you what. I would play I would play a jury dating game. Like, like one, one, of those, one of those you have to talk to them to, to sure, get you gotta, on a you date. You got to say the right answers yeah. for the different questions. <laughs> it's like you, you answer wrong and he goes, and you lose his interest. You're like, oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'll tell you what. Yeah, that would. I don't know if that would work based on reality. I was a very permissive dater. <laughs> <laughs> Shortest game ever. Like, whatever answer, like, sounds great. Let's fuck. Nice. 
I mean, like, are you? Where are you doing tonight, though? <laughs> <laughs> then the game becomes like it starts off looking like a dating game, but then very quickly, like like you have sex, and then and, but you're still there, and it's like you're trying to go to work, and Justin just keeps popping up, and it very quickly becomes, how do I get out of? It how becomes do I, a how stalker do I get game. This person out of my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, what's up? Leisure suit jury. <laughs> oh. I would love to write uh, a, a leisure suit Larry kind of game. That 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 was one of my favorites growing up. <laughs> Mm. That's amazing. Uh, okay. Uh, I got a question from Papa Sparky. Mm. Um, mm, look at that. Calling your own number, <laughs> Crispy. <laughs> Bryce, do you think that Neshcom has become a professional name for you as a producer? If so, how do you feel about that? I mean, I've had that like online handle for a really long time. Um, and I think it's not the worst online nickname you could have. Uh, just in terms of like, it's 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 pronounceable and it's it's got a rather it's got a, a spelling that you could guess pretty easily. And if you go to nesh.com, it's very clearly not my website. So, uh, uh, it it's okay. You know, it's not the worst thing. And and that's uh, a few years ago when I oh was. Oh my god! Do you know Justin? What do you think is at nesh.com? Yeah, what do you guys think is at nesh.com? Bonnie? Oh man, I think it's it's uh it's it's uh medical equipment. Medical equipment, Bonnie. What do you think? Oh my gosh, I was gonna say it's some kind of net, um, <laughs> that you catch. You you catch <laughs> wait catfish. You catch catfish that it's like to swim net. upside down. <laughs> Nish.com. Okay. I love the fact that everybody said porn except for one person that says Iranian porn. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it no. is uh, it's the a home- New England School of Homeopathy. It's a homeopathy uh, school in New England. Teaching the art and science of homeopathy. By the way, if, 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 if I'm ill, don't take me to any place where art and science are mixed. I want no, only no, science. No, no, I would neither. I would just I would just be like, hey, I don't want to be here with a bunch of homeos. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> You're talking to your doctor? Oh, my God. <laughs> and he's You're like, one of them homeos? It's like, well, what would you like? I want you to put it in a cast. No homeo. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, I want you to stitch it back together. No homeo. Yeah. Hey, by the way, I, I don't mind if I'm the sugar pill in, uh, in a placebo. Uh, uh, no homeo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got um, – uh, what time are we at? We ooh. Just keep going forever. Okay. We'll do this all night. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, uh, whatever. It's in- we got a question here from F. Zygal. F- <laughs> I think it's F. Zygal. I'm new to watching the program, but I'm curious, how did Brian and Justin meet if it's already covered where? I mean, that's that's BB Live show, like at least, right? Yeah, but even then, we didn't oh, free talk that, about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, um, I, I was headlining at Universal's uh, Halloween Horror Nights, which we're hoping to experience again in a couple of months. Um, and Justin was covering magic. Uh, you, you were covering the magic beat and you came up, and I was I was all flattered. I was like, "Oh my gosh, eye tricks! That's the premier blog for magic. That's where all the magic news and happens." And I spoke to this guy on the phone about scam school, and now he's gonna come up and meet me. I hope he likes playing rock band, cause uh, my guess is we're gonna play some rock band, cause that's what I do backstage. And yeah, spoiler so, alert: uh, we play yeah, rock band. First time- First time I ever heard Brian Brushwood's name, uh, my buddy who I was my roommate at the time who I was living with was a huge Revision 3 fan and was like, knew that I did the blog, uh, the magic blog, itricks.com, which still runs today. Uh, and was like, hey, by the way, uh, they, they got a new magic show on Revision 3. And so I'm like, cool. Well, in my mind, when I was writing the blog, it's like four stories a day, four stories a day. And he told me that. And I'm like, great, three stories, three stories a day. So I wrote about Scam School, and then there was, I think I'd booked you for an interview for the podcast, and then there was some kerfuffle with the first episode of Scam School. Oh, yeah, because... Uh, because, because Kenny Garcia had marketed that trick. Right, although uh, I strangely, you know, I was the one that taught it to Danny Garcia, and sure, it was yeah, a Martin Gardner that. principle so, and all that stuff, yeah. So initially, everybody's like, 
new ma- show that teaches magic. And it's like, oh, my God, look at it. He's ripping off Danny Garcia. And so uh, the way that I remember it, and correct me if I'm wrong, is nobody really called you or talked to you about it. Of Everybody was just up in arms. And so I emailed you or called you, I forget which. Yeah, no. and, and you explained the story. Yeah, yeah. and uh, specifically, I remember you writing a phrase that I have always, always deeply loved. And, 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 I, and I think that might have been that initial spark of like, I like this guy because you wrote, uh, uh, it was like a follow, you know, on blog posts, you would be like, you know, edit whatever latest news. Yeah. And you're like, some people are confused about the this trick. Uh, Brian's the one who taught it to Danny, so don't be upset. And then uh, he said, or you wrote, they are both viceroys in the kingdom of awesome. And I absolutely loved that phrase and it's stuck in my head ever since. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, then at that point, uh, we did another interview up in, uh, Orlando when you were doing, uh, Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, <laughs> you, that- we bonded, you walked in and you immediately, uh, saw on the side of my computer that I had brought a, a, a Ron Paul 2008 sticker. <laughs> oh, then- <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, definitely. Yeah. People are asking what year was this? What, do you remember what year this it is? It was 2008, man. Yeah. Was that so it was 08. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so we spoke on the phone when Scam School launched in April of 08 and then we met in person uh in September of 08 at Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. And so that trip, I came up with my then girlfriend and she had her mom or grandma, I forget which, that lived in Orlando and she's like, "Okay, I'll go see my mom. You go do this interview." We'll meet back at the hotel and, you know, figure out maybe we'll get dinner if it's early enough. Maybe not. Right. And so not only do I wind up staying to watch Brian's show like four times or whatever, the full slate from like playing before the park <laughs> opens. I remember I remember uh, uh, when we played um, rock band in between each of those. One of the times you were you were singing the audio for uh, the vocals for a uh, suffragette city uh, was uh, the song. Oh, yeah. No, totally. Uh, but then I wound up going back with Brian to uh, uh, his rented place. I remember I, I, I met Bonnie for the first time because I woke her and the baby up. <laughs> <and we> were- <laughs> That was Josie. I mean, Josie was, was a baby. Josie, Josie was, was an infant, a baby, baby, baby. She was nine Josie months was old. Josie was a total baby. But that that was that was the first night attack. That was that was the proto <laughs> the literal was, night that, attack. That, that was where night we... attack stepping out of the primordial ooze. It was just like Brian and I just trying to make each other laugh and and bust on each other and showing videos and and having a good time and. Uh, I, I remember that uh, that was as fun a night as possible, which I'm glad it was because my girlfriend was so fucking pissed off. <laughs> so fucking pissed off that I didn't come back. That I literally, I wanted getting back at like two in the morning. It was like late. It, it was, was super late. late. Oh, super late. <laughs> And she was so fucking cheesed off about it. I don't blame her either. That was a shit well, that, move. That was a, what was the phrase? Like that uh, shortly after you decided to marry the internet? <laughs> oh, yeah. No. And then so it was after that that we became kind of friends enough to, to be in the same circle. Oh, Brian's it was BB, Live, BB show. Live show. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you uh, you had had a couple uh, like uh, like uh, pre BB Live show. It was just like, hey, I'm going live. I'm just uh, I'm literally Brian is testing a camera and I'll just. Like text some of my internet famous friends, and so you texted all your internet famous friends, and then as soon as you've kind of gone through that rolodex, you're like, okay, anybody can call it, like, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, hey, I'm anybody. <laughs> Maybe so, yeah, one day I'll like, be the fuck in the fuck Mary kill scenario ten oh years from now. <laughs> so you had you had told me, hey, I'm doing these things. Whenever you want to come live, come on live, and. Uh, yeah, it was around that time I broke up with my girlfriend, and that was the the joke was that I broke up with my girlfriend to marry the internet. Yeah. And holy shit, fuck, we did it! <laughs> Ten <laughs> years, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> so, what so, I remember from two thousand eight is that there was like Brian has this laugh, and you only God hear this it. laugh when it's like it, two in the morning. It it, it 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 exceeds his body and i don't know where it wells up from but it is it is genuine and it means something is funny and usually i have to know what it is cuz it means it's really pretty good but then it, he saves it for his brother 
And then Justin tapped into it. Oh, yeah. And Brett Roundsville. <laughs> Yeah. I was just like, "What is with these people?" You, I mean, because it's it's it, it, you can't be faked, you know. And oh anyway, yeah, so no. you... Brian, Brian is a very genuine, like you know the genuine laughs from Brian, like because yeah. they, they that that's one of my favorite things on earth is recording the Night Attack albums, is sometimes just getting getting that combo in where like Brian will crumple, he'll just he'll, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, a, it's as if he gets punched by the jokes because he'll just it just like he just he gets like beat up and then just <laughs> <laughs> You're so right. and it's it's the best it's like the best feeling on the planet like you just it is breaking the bas the backboard in basketball it is one of the greatest feelings God, on do, it. Do, you, do you know what I'm having right now like it's not weird to be naked in front of your wife it's not weird to be naked in front of your doctor but it's weird to be naked in front of your wife and your doctor at the same time <laughs> that's what I'm experiencing right well, now they're high-fiving <laughs> Isn't it great? <laughs> Except you did that last year. <laughs> oh, it did. Yeah, during the uh, vasectomy. Yeah. And it was weird <laughs> when I put Definitely googly eyes weird. on my balls. Yeah. Uh, well, this is this this is a good a good time for this question. This is from Nick with a C in the chat. Uh, if someone told you ten years ago that this is where your life would go, would past you be proud? How would you respond? Oh, fuck 10 yes. Years ago? So proud. So proud. Like like um um. Yeah. No. I. 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 I uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, short answer. Yes. Uh, and actually, here, uh, uh, Bryce, can you go to the 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 diamond chat? Uh, uh, Spider bite has uh, uh, the person that I would tell ten years ago. This this would be the face this of young... the person <laughs> that I would talk to <laughs> ten wow. years ago. Oh, it's Bryce. Time. You used it's... to be Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> what? How did you? How did you stop being Bryce and become you? <laughs> I do uh, have a type. <laughs> <laughs> you're either Bryce <laughs> or, or you're Justin. Or you're Justin. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, that bodes well for me, I think. <laughs> oh, you, hey, you man, dude, you're, you're, that beard. You're, 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 Get that you salt and pepper going. Sailing, baby. <laughs> uh, so I would, uh, oh, my God, no. I, I To be honest, uh, I've always been very kind of optimistic about the future. Uh, cause I don't think that it costs you anything. And at worst you got to readjust your optimism, which <laughs> doesn't seem to be the worst thing on the planet. So, uh, I think in my heart of hearts, I always knew that I was going to be doing something that I loved for a living. And, uh, that guy knew it and this guy knows it for sure. Yeah, man. Spin dash 12 has it in the chat. Bryce and Viking last need to start a podcast <laughs> cause I know where they're going to be 10 years from now. Call it attack night. <laughs> <laughs> but not it, it's a fan cast for the the suit of armor not uh <laughs> okay one more one more uh yeah okay yeah here we go we got this is from TTT2 a, a lauded fa uh, one of the an original fan we see oh, we've, that, that's that that is understood T2T2 T2 T2 is a literal god and he makes everything happen can we yeah. can we uh, because i'm pretty sure it's not going to happen justin can we can we spill the beans, because I don't even think even T2 has heard that idea that we had. Can we talk about that idea for a movie? Oh, uh, that's... Is that too good or too precious? I I don't know. I don't even know what we're talking about. Very... I... Our version... Oh, like... no, 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 no. Oh, God, no, no, no. Don't say that out loud. Okay. Yeah, right. you yeah, that can would... use that. Listen, yeah, I... not... I mean, look, let's it's... let's get to his question, because he sent this... He sent this two days ago. T2T2 T2, T2 asks, uh, TRA... <laughs> Tits or ass? Uh, I think it'd be interesting to guess for the other person. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So I think Justin might be a tits man. All right, Brian thinks Justin is a tits man. I don't think so. I think he's an ass guy. Yeah, I could see. Yeah. Uh, he's got that. He's got that. Uh, that well, Florida. But, but, uh, I, 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 no, I'm. 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 I'm just thinking because ass is so obvious. I. I feel like it'd be tits. I. I, I <laughs> Are I, you I, giving your tell or something? <laughs> I, I. I'm gonna. I'm gonna double down. I. Th I think. I think he's secretly a tits guy. All right. Mm. I don't. Wait, uh, secretly. Uh, uh. You know. Of of the two, if I were to go with the two, I would say. I would say. Uh. uh Mm. Probably, <laughs> probably I would say. I'm a nice man. <laughs> I'm a nice man. 
So that's what I'd probably say. I'd probably say that. You son of a bitch, you come. <laughs> that's amazing. So, so then, Justin, turn it around. Do you, what do you think? Is Brian a tits man or an ass man? Well, this is fucked up with, you know, rarely do I comment to my doctor or my friend's <laughs> wife about That's a good excuse. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to say I'm going to say ass man as well. Hmm. Well, one day we'll find out. <laughs> when when I when I murder Tom Merritt, <laughs> marry Jason Murphy. Are, are you are you, are then you you'll a find out. Man? Uh, uh, yeah, no, dude, butts are great. Butts are pretty great. How about that? Yeah, how about that? There we go. Uh, Bryce, what do you think? Tits or ass? For me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think. Well, one belongs to the gender that no, I'm not interested in. <laughs> Hey, hold on. Wait a minute. There's let's a see scale. which There's one. Let's see scale. which one Crispy wants to score. <laughs> <laughs> it's I... about to rain in this gulch. All right, let's find out where. Uh, I can appreciate a, a good ass. <laughs> sure. But I think I think I have a soft spot for tits slash pecs. Oh, like man tits. Yeah. Pecs. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So like, hey, like... they count too, homophobe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that is that the new is that what we're doing in the 21st century? Is we call each other homos, but we add the word phobe <laughs> homo, at the yeah. end. Phobe. Oh. Hey, homo phobe. <laughs> and it's you gotta knock it off. It's gotta sound like you almost said it. <laughs> hey, homo phobe. Oh. Get off the court. You just gotta homo make sure that phobe. <laughs> And Nick with the C points out, mantids and pecs are definitely not the same thing. So, mm, no, 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 but it's the fucking uh, 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 equivalent. Yeah, but, you know, muscular. That's how. That's chesticles. how. That's how the what's it called? That's how the exchange rate runs when you cross the border. <laughs> <laughs> when you cross the border. <laughs> ah, welcome to homophobe town. <laughs> All right. Okay. What, uh, and, uh, if we're going to build a wall and the homophobes are going to pay for it. <laughs> the wall just got 10 tits higher. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question. Next question. Oh, more? Oh, yeah. Man. We'll do one more. Okay. We'll do one more. We'll do one more. All right. Let's see here. Uh, <laughs> uh, man, we had so many, it's hard to pick. Okay, okay. Uh, Jotman wants to know, this is more of a, a, a PSA, an Amber Alert. Where have you <laughs> hidden and done with ye old Fapper? Where's Fapper, guys? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, Fapper God. D. Dolphin. Do you have Fapper D. Dolphin? Mm. Uh, you might be in that closet over there. Yeah, I, mean, I, I guess normally, normally we wouldn't pause to explain nine-year-old jokes, but for those of you who, don't, who aren't aware... There was a time in which we were on Stickham, where you could join rooms, open rooms. No, tiny, tiny chat, chat tiny chat. Tiny was, it, chat. was it on Tiny Chat? Tiny okay, so we were chat. on Tiny Chat. Yeah, we had we had a we had a channer, one of them four channers. And someone was saying, uh, I I know because someone was asking about Fapper the other day, and it, it was like Fapper would be a person in a quiz. You guys would do your own miniature, like one versus a hundred sort of quiz. Yeah, we, it was like us versus the. Audience. The internet and people were all going to put a, hold up like yes or no. So we had because we had like a grid of like four by four, so sixteen people mm -hmm. in there, and then one of them, you know, everybody's there, and then we start the show. We're live on Twit, and somebody, some, you know, someone just starts transmitting uh, uh, a dude, a dude. Uh, was it? I don't know if it was a dolphin like koozie or an actual dolphin. To be honest, like yeah, that, but that it was definitely was so quick, jerking so off hazy. into it. Yeah, oh. but effectively, it was a dolphin being uh, uh, used uh, crudely on a man's penis. Yeah, not 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 like a <clears throat> nowadays. Uh, they would they would go to uh, God damn it. What was the what was the love box that they sent us jerk off tubes? 
Oh, oh, uh, uh, pleasure case. So yes, yeah. Nowadays they'd go to pleasure case, <laughs> but yeah. in these uncivilized <laughs> times, they would use a stuffed dolphin to stick their dick in. But uh, but yeah, but that became kind of an unofficial mascot for us, Fapper D Dolphin, uh, and uh, we we had little stuffed animals and shit. Uh, I'm sure. Because you guys had your somewhere own. Here. I feel like I do have a fapper somewhere here. But yeah, I no, we have. A, we, I haven't we seen it in a while. Mm. Mm. Uh, did he use the mouth or the blowhole? Asked Beef Tiger. Uh, the mouth. He, yeah, he no. Went, who right, who right fucking front knows? Uh, that ain't right. Yeah. I feel like we can do one more. Do you want to do yeah, one more one before more, we wrap one more. up? Like we can't end up. On yeah, we fapper. can't. We can't. All right. Yeah. Uh, 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 I, let me know if this is too, too, too deep. Um, but I also think if we're in, if we're going over stuff, if this is the, if this is the beginner's guide to the night attack episode, um, agent Victor 2204 asks, uh, have you guys forgiven twit, which was the podcast network that NSFW show used to be on for what happened? Is there residual issues hanging from it? I mean, I think it's been pretty, um, so I, I had this moment, um, fairly recently where I was just like, why did that upset me so much when it happened? Because we had already left the the network, and and ultimately I realized, oh, because I thought we were friends, and friends would never, you know, just announce you're dead to me <laughs> randomly <laughs> because I heard some hearsay that was misquoted about something you didn't actually even do, sure. uh, and 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 blah blah blah. And so uh, apparently that was a more fragile friendship. Apparently I was I was I was uh, I was mistaken about uh, that friendship. Apparently we weren't friends. Uh, and uh, um, but now, but nowadays, more recently, uh, and this is such a twit way for them to do it. Mm. They they've back channeled and said, hey. We've decided that if you call up and apologize again, but better this time, then we'll let you back on Twit. And I was just like, what? So still a little animosity. No, no, like just it. confusion. Just I'm still I'm more confused than ever. Okay. And it's like that's not the way friends talk to each other. That's not what happens. I mean, um, wait, are, are you still under the illusion that, that you're friends? Like, no, well, not anymore. So why would you be confused? Why would you be confused when they don't treat you like friends? It took me a few years to come to terms with the fact like oh we were never friends because that's yeah. not the way friends act you know and then uh uh but and then and then oh even after the fact even friends who have a misunderstanding this is not how friends repair friendships and then like like having achieved peace uh after all of that it was like, uh, yeah, no, I can't afford that emotional liability uh, again. So uh, the answer is yes, yes. Uh, uh, ev everything's just fine. Everything's just fine. Um, much like the other people I went to high school with, I I hope everything's great for them. But I'm not overly affected one way or the other. I have I have a, I have I have sufficiently moved beyond. Uh, you, uh, you, Justin, were never under the illusion that we were friends. I think that might have been partly because I was there a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not. I mean, like, I, we had a very fun professional relationship. Like everybody, like I think everybody was pleasant, but it, it never struck me like, huh, here we are, me and my best friends. Like, and and, 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 and like, there were really good friends that I had there that worked there. But it wasn't the top of of the company. So uh, when you know they became merc uh, uh, mercurial and and too taking uh, a responsibility for ourselves, we we reacted probably in a way that we would not instruct other people to react by getting drunk and and spilling all kinds of crazy tea uh, after doing a power hour, literally. <laughs> well, uh, and, and also, I I guess uh uh one of one of the the shrug like, well, what can you do like. Uh, what what on their side they're writing down uh, in their version of the story, Brian said things blank. Uh, number one, Brian didn't say them. 
Number two, if you wanted to be generous, you could say Justin said them, but Justin didn't even come up with them. Justin repeated something that was said by an audience member <laughs> that upset them. And uh, it's like, ah, oh, geez. You yeah, know? Okay. That, I mean, I, yeah. I, I, didn't, I don't want to open this, this wound. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, here's, here, yeah. here's the thing. Uh, so uh, the last thing I know of them, all I know is what I've done, right? And, and we, I apologize after... The fact, because I thought we were totally out of pocket on that, and and they deserved an apology. I was not, at the time, I was not in love with the way that they reacted to me personally, and and uh, uh but that was what I did. And uh, now the last thing that I heard, or somebody sent me a clip, was when I was doing the Republican National Convention in the Charmander onesie. That wound up getting played on This Week in Tech. Oh, Justin Robert Young. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and Leo seemed, uh, you know, uh, seemed like time had healed the wounds that were last exposed to me in a very, very vitriolic DM series. Uh, okay. uh, here, that, that, that was a, that question ended up being heavier. How, we got... Here we got la this good last question. <laughs> you this have not be spoken than... a sentence. <laughs> Who me? No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't have anything to say about it. That was all before me. <laughs> no, no, no. I guess here, just just to put a cab on it. Just uh, uh, everything is fine on this end. And uh, uh, if there's anything that made sense b between us and Swit uh, to come on and be a guest or something, and knowing all the people that we know on that on that network, then. I would not have a problem. Whether they would have a problem is in their hearts and souls. Yeah, I, I, I would like it if, if I were the dungeon master of this game of life. I would love it if they at least understood how mistaken they were about because the version that they say is so detached from reality. I, I would love it if they at least knew that that's not what happened. And uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not under any illusions about making people see the true face of God. Yeah, Here's no, all I do. Yeah, know you're right. You're when right. I, I mean, when I go yeah. back and I look at how awesome that when we when we took advantage of that studio, I genuinely think that NSFW was the best use of that Twit Brickhouse studio, bar none. I don't oh, think any dude, other bringing the, the any summer other, music series, uh, any other show utilized that space the way that we did. And I'm I. I look at that now, and I'm just like, oh god, I just want to fuck it. I just want to fuck <laughs> well, it. Like and, and, do you remember? Do you remember mm. when we did the episode where we just like the whole conceit was that we were children running around a dad's office oh, using all, did the... all the different sets. Yeah, yeah. When, it, like that was so good. Was good. So good. Uh, all right, here one last uh, one last amuse bouche to get us off. This is hot beverage. Is asking, are you guys happy? Is you guys are you guys like we're y'all in a good spot? Man, I think so. I I I'm realizing how riddled with anxiety I am all the time and I've done a lot of head work in the last year and I think I've done really good. Like what makes me happy is making other people happy and I felt like for the last 6 months or so we made a lot of people happy and that makes me happy. So I hope so. I I would never just say yes because uh I don't know. It just seems oh, Bonnie's rolling her eyes at me. That's fine. Uh, I'll say happy. Yeah, no, I think I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in a good place. You know, the, 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 the physical side of things like dealing with an injury like this with, for the first time in my life, uh, has been challenging, but, uh, as it gets better, I, I definitely am appreciating the kind of journey and, and, you know, again, happiness is really a, uh, it's a fragile thing and either you put effort into it or you don't. Awesome. Well, uh, I think that'll do it for to ask you guys anything. Bonnie, are you happy? Right, how about this? How about we use this Reddit to, to give back? Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, wait, wait, let's wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bonnie, oh. I, want, I want to hear from Bonnie. Yeah, I, I just really think that focusing on happy is like the worst thing you can focus on. Oh, shit, really? It's the pursuit. We have the pursuit of happiness. And it's like, are you pursuing? Are you pursuing? Yeah. Because oh, you're, definitely. you will be yeah. happy at sure. points if you are pursuing. So, like, when people get really fixated on are you happy? It, it just pisses me off. It's really? Like, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, so, like, for me, uh, and this is so trite. This was on, yeah. like, a fucking button. It said, uh, I, I, I can't remember where I saw it. I think in high school. farted. <laughs> <laughs> 
whole it said, world it part said, of that <laughs> it said it said uh in my in my experience the people who are happiest are the ones that are too busy to ask whether or not they're happy exactly. and it's like that's Ooh. that's fucking true yeah. i think that's true 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 sure like, but, but also, so, this question in the AMA is also valid. You guys are doing good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, everything's fine. I just don't want, you know, I just think it's a good thing. Well, I, I guess here he, he would be the only thing I would say from, from that perspective of, like, asking people whose opinions are apparently mean something. Uh, the, I didn't get happier the more successful uh, we got in podcasting. I didn't get happier the more money that I made. I got happier because I worked on being happy. I pursued, like Bonnie said, being happy, and I, 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 I made that choice. And you can make that choice now where wherever you are in your journey. If you are at the beginning, middle, or an end, you can decide that you want to be healthier about your emotions. Dude, that is, like, legit. The moments I'm happiest when I go to bed are the moments that I'm like, hot damn, I kicked a lot of ass today. Like, I did a lot. That feeling of accomplishment. There's nothing better than waking up, moving from thing on fire to thing on fire, and then laying down and being exhausted and feeling like what you did mattered. That shit rules. And and I've had yeah. more of that this year than... Uh, oh, uh, way, as Mike TV points out, that being said, being happy with money and uh, uh, fulfillment creatively is much better than being happy without money and creativity. <laughs> Too shame, so, good sir. So, so just, yes, yeah, yes, and you're still having steak, but one's a steak in the Waffle House and the other is at the Capitol Grill. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, man, with that, uh, uh, I guess, uh, are, are we not doing Diamond Time this time? I think no, we're doing Diamond Time, man. Diamond, Diamond oh, let's, is where let's you jump shout in. out your, uh, your project right here on the show. Head on over to reddit.com slash r slash Diamond Club. Man, I've been living here this whole goddamn episode. We're going to begin here with J.F. Dubow. He says, all right, this is zero hour and the countdown's almost up. If we're going to do this, we got to do it now. Here's the lowdown. Brian uh, Guthrie and I have books up for Dragon Awards. Obviously, we want to win, but we can't do it without the awesome power of Chat Realm and the Diamond Club. Not to mention, how awesome would it be to have representatives from the community get some of their awards at the big Night Attack meetup of the year? So please head down to bit.ly slash dragonshed2017 to sign up for voting. When you get your email with the ballot, just vote for A God in the Shed by J.F. DuBose uh, in Horror Novel and Rise by Brian Guthrie in science fiction novel. And that is it. It's all you have to do to support independent writers from this community. But this is your last chance. Thank you, Diamond Club. I love you. I've already done this. I encourage you to do it. Uh, head on over there. All you got to do is enter in your email. They'll send you a ballot via email. So uh, you just have to answer that. This will reward people who can take the time to do a two-step process, which is better for us. Because randos don't like to do, they'll sign up for the email thing and then forget to fill out the ballot. If we are hardcore about it, we can make a, uh, a change with these guys. Heck, so go ahead. Yes, and JF Dubo is one of the good guys. Uh, I'm, <laughs> sorry, I was going to make a crass joke about our next uh, person. <laughs> Brian Guthrie, author, says Diamond Clubbers at Dragon Con. JF Dubo and myself will be at the Barnes and Noble Edgewood in Atlanta Friday at 1800 to sign books and just meet our readers. Rumor has it JF might eat. Even do a reading if enough diamond clubbers show up. We so uh, I so want to hear this, and trust me, you will too. I've also heard that an audible co copy of Rise is up for grabs. Uh, all you have to do is show up with a copy of either my book or JF's, or get one there. Hint, hint. And I'll be picking one person to give an audible copy to. Three things, great. Uh, three things for you. Also, uh, obviously, we know the con's going to keep you busy, but if you could spare the time, could you spare that diamond club love for us? That's it. You've been also supportive and of us independent writers from the community. Thank Diamond Club. You are the bomb. So that is 6 p.m. Oh, uh, dude, look at this. This last one makes me happy. Uh, well, let's go ahead and read it. It is uh, Lestige? Lestige? Uh, 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 19, or sorry, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Lestige 83. Y'all, we did it! I got funded. The fifth graders at Wooten Elementary in Austin, Texas. Thank you so much. Die in a fire. <laughs> awesome. So that was an old, uh, an old diamond uh, time that we we helped make happen. We got yeah, a bunch yeah, of dude. kids, uh, uh, some some equipment. That's red. Dude, this was fun, Justin. I feel like we should do another one of these sometime. 
Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Everybody wants to uh, shout out their projects here on Diamond Time. You can go ahead and do it by heading on over to reddit.com uh, slash r slash diamond club or diamondclub.reddit.com. Uh, the big sticky post at the top is where you can shout out your projects. And you're going to have a while to do it. Because uh, we don't have another episode where we're, I, mean, I guess we might read stuff at, at Dragon Con, but we, uh, uh, it, yeah, fight, fight, fight. It'll be September 12th should be the next live non-Dragon Con episode, September 12th. By the way, two live episodes this month, right? Because we got uh, oh, Dragon yeah. Con and then Scoops Fest. Scoops right. Fest, Scoops yeah. Fest. Speaking of which, have you, have you decided, are you, are you cool with, with uh, pulling out the all set up magician? You know, I, I I've yet to hear back from him. He actually doesn't have a uh, email, so uh, I got I had to wait for a letter to come back. That guy. Uh, hey man, we learned a lot today. We learned that you guys ask uh, thoughtful questions when given the opportunity. Thank you for doing that. Uh, we learned that uh, happiness is something to be pursued, not assumed. Yeah. Uh, we learned that uh, every so often we could give an honest answer. Uh, also, we learned that a lot of you guys in the chat are are weren't there from the beginning and that each of you guys jumped on at different points of this amazing insane ridiculous journey we've had uh we learned that we're kind of like rick and morty or eating bags of shit <laughs> we learned we'll see you next tuesday night of fire i'm allergic to bees oh Justin Robert Young Every time you go I get so sad That I wanna drink a warm glass of Drano Night attack Night attack Night attack, Night attack. Night attack. Night attack. Night attack, night attack, night attack, I love you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>